Hi guys, welcome back to Mummy Cooks Homemade. Today we're going to be doing Peking beef. I'm going to start it off in the pan on the stove and then we're going to transfer it to a slow cooker or crock pot um, and let it go on low for the rest of the day. So first off, I'm going to put some mustard in a bowl and this is Dijon mustard. Dijon and you're going to need one tablespoon of this so one tablespoon of Dijon mustard and then you're going to add your beef slices so I've got 380 grams of beef slices you're going to add that to your mustard should have got a big bowl really hindsight's a wonderful thing And you're just going to give it a stir and count all the slices. This is for two people. My children won't eat this. And this will be served with um, a homemade egg fried rice. This Peking beef is just a homemade recipe. It's not meant to be the original Peking beef it's just what we make at home so that's all mixed so now on a plate so you can see what I'm doing some plain flour And all you need to do is take each strip into the flour and put it aside into the flour and just repeat that until you've coated all the pieces. So we haven't had this recipe for, oh god, must be at least a couple of years now. I think when you've got kids it's easier to just cook stuff that they like then you know they're, that they're going to eat and often as mums or dads who do the cooking it's just not either budget friendly or you just can't be bothered to cook two separate meals so today me and hubby will be having this the kids will have the rice they do like rice but I'll have to probably do them some chicken to go with theirs. I will get them to try this. Because I don't believe in, I don't like it until they've actually tried it. Apparently, it, so they say, it takes 15 attempts at eating a piece of food for a child. To get them to either like it or not like it, basically. I don't remember where I ate that. But I know it's something my husband always went on about with the kids when they were really, really small. I would just let it go if they didn't like something. But he never would. He would always push for him to try it again and again. Which I suppose, looking back, he was right, really. Because now my kids do eat much more than they used to. In variety. So I'm nearly done with this and then no, let, me, let me just get some more flour in there. Most people will probably season the flour. I don't like to do that. My husband's got high blood pressure, so I don't like to add salt in. If I want salt, I'll put it on my own individual plate. And he can do the same if he fancies a little bit of um, salt on his. I know everyone says, oh, you must season your food while you're cooking, but... 
my kids don't need to eat a lot of salt. I don't think I've ever given them salt, if I'm being honest. Not on their meal. So I don't plan on starting. And I know my husband doesn't add it to his meal. So, yeah. Right. That, di that lovely dirty job's done. I'll take you over to the stove. Right, so now we're back at the stove. What you want is a pan. And it decides to light. It's a pain in the backside sometimes, these. All you want to do is heat your oil. Just going to heat it up and what you're going to do is just brown the meat in this pan. Once it's done, set it aside into a container but leave the oil in there if there's any left and there will be some bits at the bottom where it's probably catched so just leave it in there We're not looking to cut this all the way through, just to give it some colour so that when it's in the sauce it doesn't look pale and anemic. After all, they say we eat with our eyes. Mine is on this hob here, or I, is on its lower setting, but well, that's plenty for this because the strips are not very thick. I'm not going to take long to brown. Just turn the turn it up a little. So all you're doing is sealing it. So easy to use though, so what I'm going to use is a slotted spoon and it's fine on this pan. It won't scratch it. There we go. Much better. So this is what I have to say, leave whatever's in the pan in there because that's flavour at the end of the day just remember when you take your beef strips out to use a slot of spoon because you don't want that just plain grease sitting on your beef strips and you want it in there because it's vegetable so that's going to go in and going to cook in that
slot number one. Second batch. And last order thought. You now sometimes I hate frying stuff. Because you know, you just got to clean your cooker down once you've finished. It's the worst part, I think. I started off with a couple of tablespoons of oil in this pan. And I think what I'm going to do is put a couple, one, maybe one more in. out a little bit. That there, there is just going to be some lovely flavour. So we have got a I mean I would say a section of our channel coming up which will be what we eat in a week which is basically the main meal of the day in the evening so every day for a week I'll show you what we've had basically just inspiration really for anyone who struggles to think of because I know I do different foods to feed the family and stuff like that just so maybe I could show you something different you never thought to try just things like that so that'll go up once a week so yeah, I started filming it Monday yesterday so it'll finish on the last day Sunday and it'll be uploaded then every Monday Right, I'm going to turn this pan off. Put my meat to the side. I am coming back to the hob. Got all that flavour in the pan up. But first, I need to grab some vegetables so what you're going to need now after doing that you're going to need eight fluid ounces of water two tablespoons of soy sauce one and a half tablespoons of light brown sugar two teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce one and a half tablespoons of tomato puree one onion thin sliced one celery stick finely chopped and a hundred between a hundred and hundred and fifty grams, what whichever you want, of mushrooms sliced. So I'll grab the things and then I'll be back. Hey guys, so we're back now. All we're gonna do is I've got the rest of my ingredients. I've decided to add a couple of frozen chopped cloves of garlic as well. Last minute thing. But I do like garlic. So in this pan, it's still got the remainders of all the beef that was cooked in there. What I'm going to do now is put in the 8 fluid ounces of water. one onion, the mushrooms, um, the one slice, st uh, slice. <laughs> one stick of sliced celery and there's the two frozen cubes of uh, garlic. So we're going to bring them in, into the pan there. Let's have grabbing a wooden spoon for this. 
scrape the bottom of the pan. So. The aim in, aim in this part is not, it's not to cook all the vegetables. Basically, just to quickly soften, deglaze this pan. Get an, as you can see, I'm using my wooden spoon and it's got a tapered edge so I can really get down on the bottom of that pan there. This is a cast iron pan or skillet as they call it in the States. So all I will do with this is rinse it, no soap, and then just dry it well. Never ever leave them and put them back wet because they'll rust. That's not rust, that's just from cooking. And then rub a bit of oil over it and it's good to go. So, I've pulled everything up off the bottom of that pan as best I can, I think. Yeah, you can see, looks like a little bit of gravy. So I've pulled up all the bits. Now, I've got all the ingredients I said about the to my opio and everything. I've put them all into one bowl ready. So I'm going to pop these in. Like I did with the garlic, if you want to pop something else into this, then feel free. If you want to put some ginger in, something like that this also if you don't have a slow cooker you can cook it in the oven you can cook it in a pyrex dish or whatever dish you've got with a lid on gas mic too so that's very low for about one and a half hours in the center of the oven so don't worry if you haven't got a slow cooker it can be done in the oven as well I've never tried it on the stove top, cooking all of it. I would imagine because it look how thick the sauce is now. I just want to cook this now until it comes to a boil, and it's nearly there, as you can see. I'm going to throw back in the beef with all of its juices. If you're cooking this in a slow cooker, I would recommend for about four hours on low, not on high. And I use the slow cooker liners, just makes life so much simpler. Right, because of the flour on the beef, this has thickened up quite a lot. And I am going to be cooking it for four hours, so I'm going to add some more. So that's that. That's 300 mils there. I haven't poured it all in, it's just plain plain water. And see how that looks. I've added 100 mils of that so far. That looks better, especially with it, it's going to be cooking as well for a while. But also, don't make it too thin because some liquid is going to come out of your mushrooms, out of your celery, and out of your onions too. So that I think is just about right. So I add another 100 mils in. I'm going to take that off the heat. I'll be back with you in one second when I've got the crock pot. Right, so I've now got my liner inside my slow cooker, crock pot, whatever you want to call it. 
to make sure it's well tucked in. All you're going to do, mine's already set to low, plugged in and set to low. Carefully, and don't burn yourself guys. Pull this in. And you can see I've took all the scrapings off the bottom of that pan so that's now added in and that's giving it some more flavour. Minimal washing, that's what I like. So before it gets too hot I'll show you. There you go, doesn't that look good? So I'm going to do mine four hours. And I'm also going to serve mine with an egg fried rice. So I will record the egg fried rice and I'll upload that as well. Okay, I'll show you the end result tonight. Thanks guys. Right guys, welcome back. So this is the end of the Peking beef. So I'm just going to plate some up. This is some homemade egg fried rice. And here is the Peking beef, which has been on low for about four hours. There's plenty of meat, plenty of sauce. And there you go, it's as easy as that. So if you like the recipe, like, comment, subscribe, and see you next time on Mummy Cooks Homemade. Bye.